Hi, welcome back to the Cordless Vacuum Guide and continuing our review on the Roborock S6 Max V, we will be looking closely at the Roborock app. I mentioned in the unboxing video that you can use the Mi Home app or Roborock app. However, as I was trying to add the S6 Max V in the Mi Home app, I couldn't find it on the list. So your only option for this would be using the Roborock app. If there are any changes, I'll give you a heads up. Take note that all Roborock products don't have a remote and you'll need to use the app in order to gain access to the more advanced features such as no-go lines and zone cleaning. Using this app will require you to have a router that will act as a bridge to connect the robot and app. Also, the app does not support 5G Wi-Fi, so before connecting, make sure to adjust your phone settings to 2.4G. Before I start, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I publish new reviews, and let's get started. The process of pairing the app and robot is pretty straightforward. Just type Roborock wherever you download your apps from and look for this icon. Next, you'll have to press these two buttons on the robot to reset, reset the Wi-Fi. Wi then press the plus icon on the upper right corner of the app to add the robot. Make sure to choose the correct time zone for the scheduling and the Do Not Disturb feature to work properly. One way to ensure this is to use the sync option in the app. I like the simplicity of the interface. Once you've run the robot, this map will appear and there's easy access to all the features which we'll look at one by one. First, let's look at these two icons at the lower right corner of the map that provides access to the map and mode settings. When you tap on the map settings, these three icons will appear. Edit room, no-go zone, and edit map. Edit room provides users the ability to merge, divide, customize, and sequence areas you want to clean. When you tap on divide, it allows you to quote-unquote divide rooms or areas on a floor level. This is most useful in larger homes that have lots of rooms. Unfortunately, it doesn't give you the option to name these rooms, so I hope Roborock will add this feature in future updates. The merge icon does the opposite of divide and removes the division between rooms. Customize gives users the option to assign mode and water level settings. This comes in handy inside homes with rooms that have different floor types. So for example, one room has carpet and another has hardwood, you can automatically program the correct power and mop settings in each room. Lastly, the sequence icon lets you assign which rooms the robot will clean first, second, and so forth. Below the map setting is the mode setting that lets users adjust power and mop settings. Like the S5 Max, the S6 Max V has 5 different power settings and 4 water level settings. I would suggest using the gentle setting if you want the robot to just mop so it goes further and covers a larger area. Just in case the pad isn't attached, Disregard the water level settings as the software detects it and water will not drip. The no-go zone is my favorite feature of the Roborock app and the most practical in my opinion. It gives you the option to add an invisible wall, no-go or no-mop zones. An invisible wall is a line that will block the robot's path from going into areas that you specify on the app. While the no-go zone lets you assign an area, a box or a rectangular space that's off-limits to the robot, the no map zone has the same function as the no go zone, so I won't elaborate on this further. Lastly, in this section, we'll look at the edit map feature. So, this is the area where you can save individual maps of different levels in the home. You can add up to four different levels, and on each level, you can add invisible walls, no go zones, or no map zones. It also has a room recognition feature that automatically splits each area into rooms. Take note that this feature isn't perfect. So you can split it manually using the edit room feature if you're not satisfied with the results. If you look at my screen, I have three different maps saved. One for the third floor, another for the second floor, and one for the roof deck area. So if I wanted to add another level, I'll just scroll down and tap on the create map, then run the robot to save the map. Once you have multiple maps saved, this icon will appear in the lower left portion of the map, which provides easy access just in case you need to clean another level. For now, only the S6 Max V has this feature. It isn't available with the older variants like the S5 Max, but Roborock says that they will slowly roll out an update, so hopefully older models will have access to this feature. Next, we'll look at these three icons here. Tapping on Room lets you select an area to clean. It also gives users the option to choose how many times the robot will go over the area, up to three times. The All option in the middle tells the robot to clean the whole level, Lastly, the zone option lets users specify a specific zone that the robot will clean. This is different from the no-go or no-map zones in that it will clean the area inside the box, whereas the no-go zone avoids it. 
Tapping on a clean icon on the bottom right engages the default cleaning cycle, and the left icon changes from fully charged to dock. If for some reason you move the charging dock to a different location, the robot detects this and readjusts its position in relation to the map. You may not use this function often, but tapping on the dock icon instructs the robot to go back to the dock. This is where the S6 Max V shines. Even on complex areas, it manages to find the dock more often than not. Lastly, we'll look at the main menu, which can be accessed by tapping on this icon right here on the upper right. So these are the items on the menu. One difference between the S5 Max and the S6 Max V versions of the app is that the S6 has the camera functions, which is absent in the S5. Here are the options under the vacuum settings. Make sure that the map save mode is turned on to gain access to the multi-floor map feature. Another option you should turn on is carpet mode. This feature will automatically increase airflow when a brush roll detects carpet or rugs. The DND or Do Not Disturb feature instructs the robot not to clean or play any voice prompts during the assigned time frame. The camera function gives users the option to turn the camera on or off, but for the best results when it comes to navigation, all options must be turned on. The timer function provides the option to schedule cleanups. It's pretty flexible as it gives users different options with regards to time, frequency, and even permits folks to program a specific mode setting depending on the need. Aside from that, you can set unlimited schedules at different time slots depending on what suits you best. The remote control function lets you control the robot much like an RC toy. There are two options, the directional buttons and joystick. I don't really use this feature, but if you're bored, it's something that you can do to pass the time. Cleaning history logs the previous cleaning cycles and gives you an overview on how many times you've used the robot and the total area it has covered. Maintenance gives you a heads up when to replace consumable parts like the filter and brushes. It also alerts you when to clean the sensors which is handy because it takes away the guesswork and provides you a handy reference tool. After you've cleaned the sensors or replaced any of the consumables, tap on these buttons to reset the counter. If there are issues with the robot, you have easy access to Roborock's customer service email here in the app. The user manual is also available inside the app just in case you want quick access to it. It also has a Find My Robot feature that fires a voice prompt when you tap on it. This is useful if for some reason you cannot find the robot. I hope this video gives you an idea on what to expect from the app. It's one of the better ones in my opinion when it comes to the options it provides for users. However, it lacks some features such as the option of naming rooms that would have been useful with devices like Alexa. But still, it's one of the better options out there when it comes to responsiveness and usability. If you have any questions about this app, please leave them below. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if this video is helpful for you. And thanks again for watching.